Well, hello and welcome to the channel. Glad you could join me. Now, this is going to be part two of our Tiger One early production uh, by Academy in 135th scale. In this video, we're going to be doing our turret and also our tracks, some weld seams, and the spare tracks too. Quick look at our instructions here. Uh, we're going to be leaving some of these little parts off. Uh, we need to be doing some <laughs> fitting and getting everything together. We're also going to be building up our main armament here. And uh, we'll be assembling that into the turret. And we want to make sure that uh, we get that fitted correctly. Now there are no poly caps uh, to hold our main armament in place. So that's just a friction fit. And we will start off with uh, fitting our turret halves together. So this is a uh, two-piece, uh, well, three-piece turret if you include the, <laughs> the roof section. Uh, and we do want to check this. And you can see here they, they are kind of tight right there. At the pivot point where it goes into the uh, inside of the turret. And we're going to want to check the other side as well. Uh, and <laughs> make sure that we don't have it upside down. Um, and one side will go in, the other side not so much. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and do a little bit of polishing here. Now we don't want to take off too much plastic because it is a friction fit and we don't want our main gun tube to fall down. <laughs> that, that's uh, a little bit of an issue to fix. We just want them nice and snug. And that is a long barrel that, that it has to hold up. So uh, as long as we can get it together and there still be plenty of friction, uh, we'll be in good shape here. So the gun tube is a two-piece affair. Now you can get aftermarket barrels for these tanks, but uh, we're just going to go ahead with what the kit has provided for us. And I am going to start gluing it at the muzzle end. And since I'm using the, to me, extra thin, it will wick right down into the, uh, uh, the seam. And as you can see, the sides do want to splay out a little bit, so we're just going to glue this up in sections. And once I get it to tack up, uh, I will use just these uh, wooden clothespins to hold it in alignment. And then we will just go right down the, uh, the seam of the barrel there and make sure that everything is uh, mated up. And we will just reinforce that with some more clothespins to hold it all in place. So our elevation drum here has two pieces. And that's the uh, mantlet. And then we have the uh, back side of that, which is what we're going to glue to the elevation drum. We need to make sure that that's fully seated and nice and secure. And now we can just go ahead and... Uh, glue up the turret halves here so I just want to make sure that the seam is nice and even or as even as I can get it uh, it is just a little bit offset but we can fix that later with a little bit of putty if we need to now since this is a two-piece turret we are going to go back and pay close attention to those uh, glue seams and fill that uh, if we need to so now we do have a little bit of a bevel uh, where these parts were molded. So I'm just going to flat sand this a little bit here to kind of knock that down a little bit. Just to take that uh, beveled edge off. And now we can go ahead and uh, fit the uh, uh, turret roof in place. And as you can tell, I'm not really following the instructions all that much. They want you to put all those little bitty parts on it. And I feel it's much better to do it, well, the hillbilly way. Get all the major assemblies done first of all your major parts. And then you can always come back in and put the little accessories and stuff on. Brackets and all that. And then we'll worry about hatches and what have you. Now our main armament barrel here or gun tube is uh, nice and dry for us. I'm using a flexible um, sanding stick here just to come in and polish that seam and if we did a good job gluing it up this should polish out and we shouldn't need any uh, uh, filler at all. As a matter of fact uh, 
I haven't used any filler on it, so hopefully it'll be fine. Now here on the muzzle brake, you can see it's not exactly round, and that's the kind of thing that you get with uh, two-piece barrels. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to take and find us a drill bit uh, that has a little bit of resistance there, and we're just going to drill it out and then move on to the next one until we get it nice and round. Since this uh, 88 uh, millimeter main gun is such a feature on a Tiger, we're going to want to make sure that this is uh, as spot on as we can get it because it is a major feature of a Tiger tank and we want it to look good. Once we're done drilling it, just a little bit of polishing and that should finish it off for us. There we go. That looks nice. So the next thing we need to do is attach our uh, main gun tube here to our mantlet. So I'm going to use the Tamiya uh, thick cement for this. It has uh, a lot more body in the glue. I just need to be careful that I don't get any of it on the gun shroud there. And we're just going to press it into place. And make sure that it's lined up. There should be a space around the barrel and that shield right there. Because this gun does recoil inside that in, uh, the armor shield. And that looks pretty good. So now we can start working here uh, on these uh, commander's cupola and also our uh, loader's hatch. I'm going to do the closed hatch uh, instead of the open hatch but we can go ahead and put these parts together and uh, get them all sanded and everything we can also do our storage bin and put those aside uh, we don't want to put a lot of attachments on the turret yet because we are going to do some weld seams and we don't want to be knocking stuff off or have it in our way so first up we're going to take a look here at the commander's cupola now the lower ring that has the vision slots in it has tabs on it so there are two alignment tabs that are supposed to go into the cupola housing there and if you can see there <laughs> when uh when they engineered this those those tabs really don't engage so you just kind of eyeball it and line those up and then we'll just glue that up and we'll just go ahead and install our hatch. Now I have already cleaned up and uh, sanded all these parts uh, like I had described in the uh, uh, first video. Now when it comes to hatches or any other part, uh, if you can glue these up from the inside, uh, that will definitely help keep uh, you from having uh, large glue spots or something that you may need to polish out later. So we always have to be on the watch out of um, Tamiya Extra Thin seeping through the seam and possibly gluing our fingers to the model. <laughs> I mention that because, well, you know, I've done it a couple of times. I'm sure you probably have too. And there we go. Once we get that on, we can take and uh, dress up anything that we need to, especially on like those grab handles. Now our storage box here on the back of the turret is a two-piece affair. Just have to glue the bottom on it, and I did lightly sand it. Now those seams and stuff's not going to be seen, so it's not a uh, real big issue. Now we can turn our attention to our tracks. So Academy has provided us with these rubber band style tracks. They are really thick, and they don't quite look the part, to be quite honest with you. Not to mention the fact that you can't really get the right track sag that you need. So what I did is I bought these aftermarket tracks. Now these are Petting House Model Bow. I may have slaughtered the name, sorry about that. But these are the early type tracks. And uh, they are single link, which means <laughs> we've got a lot of pieces. Now this kit comes with 210 links. And we're going to have to clean uh, each of these up. Uh, 
but it shouldn't be too hard because there's only one little sprue attachment end on it that we need to polish and then we will have to fit these uh, track links together so I've left the front of the vehicle uh, not yet attached that way we can get to the drive sprockets that'll make it easier when we go to do the wrap of our tracks and let those dry in place so here we're going to go ahead and start cleaning up links. Now this is going to take quite a while um, because they're, uh, according to my count, it's like 98 that you need for each side and probably we'll need extras to get the right track sag that we need because the Tiger One has this very specific uh, look with the tracks. They're, they're not real tight and we want to make sure that they uh, sag just right. Now with all that filing and sanding, of course we're going to have a lot of uh, polystyrene dust on here. Just to show you what will happen when we hit it up with the Tamiya Extra Thin, all of that will just disappear. It'll just melt right in and it will never be seen again. So we're not going to worry a whole lot about cleaning and, and dusting those all off. So what I've done here is I've went and taped a straight ruler uh, down to my mat. That way I can assemble these track sections and then we can just run glue uh, right down along it. The to me extra thin will seep into uh, the little cracks here between each link and provide us with a good solid glue surface. Now this first section that I'm doing right now is the lower section uh, and that's from the center uh, of the front and rear road wheels that are actually touching uh, the ground and we will make two of these up, uh, one for the right and one for the left. We just want to make sure they're nice and straight uh, before we set them aside so that they can uh, firm up for us. So after this base section has uh, gotten nice and stiff for us, uh, we will glue it to uh, the two sections for wrapping around both the drive sprocket and the idler at the rear of the track run. And now we'll go ahead and apply our Tamiya Extra Thin. And once we get these sections glued together, we're just going to let them set for two or three minutes. Uh, we don't want them solid. We want these end pieces to still be pliable enough that we can actually wrap it around the drive sprocket and also the idler. So I do like to keep track of the number of links that I'm using. Uh, for the base section that we glued up solid that's 32 links. For around our drive sprocket that is 15 links and then our idler is 10 links. Now these numbers may change but you know we've got it our, our starting count anyway and so I have marked the tracks uh, on the solid portion uh, with a silver marker I think you can see that um, just so that I know where the uh, end of that solid piece is and then for the pliable ends we're going to just start wrapping them around now we do have to be careful not to pull the track apart <laughs> while, we're, while we're trying to wrap it and actually engage these drive sprocket teeth. And they do fit kind of tight, but uh, these aftermarket tracks actually fit better than I thought they were going to. So I was really surprised and pleased with that. So we're going to wrap up the front first, and then we will wrap up around our uh, idler here which is also where the tank's slack adjustment is, although these tracks were always pretty loose. So I do tape this into place just so that they don't fall down, and uh, we set that aside and let it dry. Now these are not uh, glued to the road wheels or the drive sprocket or the idler because we still want to be able to remove these for painting, and uh, once these are nice and solid, we will make up the top section and as you can see here on the opposite side, I do have that straight run underneath the road wheels. That way the vehicle's setting level. 
So now we're ready to do the top section of track. So I've already glued together uh, how many that I think I'm going to need to do this. Uh, and we need to feed this in and get it set up very carefully. And we're going to have to bend it around the, uh, the idler. So the way I've figured the best way to do this is to have it join at the top of the drive sprocket and then just wrap around the idler. That'll make it easier to insert and to glue this up after the model's been painted. And while everything is still pliable, we want to make sure that we get it seated correctly around the road wheels there on top and that we do have the sag that we, we want. And we'll just push everything down. So I, <laughs> I do use my uh, tweezers to hold pressure on it there. And then I made up these uh, a little bit too long, so I'm going to take off a couple of um, links here. And then all we got to do is tuck it in and get this fitted up. And we'll be able to take a final count on the number of track links that we've used. So the number that we used was 32 for the base. And that's the ground run. And then for around the drive sprocket was 16, so I added one there. And I left the idler at 10, and then the total number that I used was 42 across the top run for a total of 102. Uh, so that'll be 102 per side. So now we're going to start preparing uh, the upper hull here for some weld seams. I do need to take a slight taper off of that side plate there, or the I should say the end of the front plate. We want it nice and flush on that section right there so that we don't have any trouble later on with uh, our mud shields. Now I go back in and I do file a 45 degree bevel uh, right onto the edge of the part as well as the front edge of the side plate. And this will give us a nice groove um, between the two pieces where we can apply our weld seam. Now I've not made weld seams before on this channel and I've only done it maybe two other times <laughs> so we'll see how well this works out. Um, lots of test fitting of course you want to make sure that you got everything you know lined up and everything's going to work right for you before you commit to glue. You can see our groove that we have there and that's where we're going to uh, lay in our weld seam we do just need space uh, to accept that weld seam so that we'll be able to mold it correctly. Now we're going to go ahead and do the top of the turret the same way. However, these plates did fit together really tight. Uh, so I'm having to use a scriber here to actually cut us a, a little groove in uh, to get started. Had I really thought about this before uh, I got this far along, uh, I would have beveled these pieces before assembling the roof onto the turret, but that's all right. We'll just work around it. So what I have here is a curved triangular file, and I'm going along my scribe line, and we're just going to file in a little groove to accept our weld seam. Now, I'm no expert on weld seams, this being like the first one that I've done on the channel. Uh, and I hope it goes well. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but this groove that we're filing in only needs to be wide enough uh, for the width of the detail that we want it to end up at. And so you can see that detail there on the file that I'm using. So I did add a piece of polystyrene here to the top of the front armor plate because the, uh, the actual roof uh, section of the hull wanted to sag and so with that added tab it's nice and solid now and we don't have to worry about that pushing away or separating while we're working on our weld seam which we are going to use a milliput for that now this is a this is milliput standard is two-part epoxy 
So we simply use these uh, two equal amounts of the two-part epoxy and we're just going to smash it all together. It's like kneading. We're going to knead this together and uh, get it all mixed up until it's a uniform color. Once it's uniform, you're completely mixed. And you, you will notice that uh, the milliput will start to get warm. And that's the epoxy hardener and resin reacting with one another. So I have a little bit of talcum powder here, which helps keep it from sticking to my gloves. Uh, and we're just going to roll this out into noodles. So we have about uh, 45 minutes to an hour working time, and then this milliput is going to get too dry and uh, unmanageable for our purpose. So we need to kind of work as fast as we can. So in theory, this is actually supposed to work pretty good. Uh, in practice, however, I found it to be a little bit tedious. <laughs> uh, so what I'm using here is a toothpick um, and some water and we simply laid our little milliput noodle <laughs> right into the groove that we had filed into the top of the turret and the ideal here is to kind of push the milliput you're, you're making an indentation in it and pushing it together at the same time uh, as you go and uh, it's supposed to kind of look like a weld seam. I tried several different tools and the toothpick or the the hillbilly toothpick or the cocktail stick or whatever you like to call it seemed to work best for me and the reason why is because the uh, the wood of the toothpick actually holds moisture and that moisture keeps the milliput from sticking to the toothpick. Uh, if the toothpick does get dry, uh, you will start to pull the milliput up out of the uh, groove. And we don't want that to happen. And so you can see here what I came up with. Uh, it's a little rough on the turret. I, I did better on the lower hull. Uh, we did do these uh, side sections here, the front armor. And across the top plate there as well. And then we did uh, right around on the glacius there. And, and the front where the where the front plate met the side plates and a little bit on the on the back I don't think it looks too bad I just need a lot more practice for that now this front plate uh, on the lower hull where it meets the glacius here it has a seam in it there between the molded in weld seam and the actual front of the vehicle and that seam is not supposed to be there, so that needs to be filled. I'm just using the sprue goo to fill it, but you can use any model putty you want to fill that. It should look like one thickness instead of two pieces. So need to go ahead and fill that. And let that dry, we'll sand that off later. So now we're going to go back in our instructions to all these little pieces that we've left off. All of our pioneering tools and some vent covers and, and the headlights and stuff. And we'll just go ahead and get those items uh, glued to the model and that'll get it ready for painting. Now of course this is totally subjective. If, uh, if you're like me and, and you tend to glue all these little items on and paint them on the vehicle, uh, that, that's your choice. And of course if you are like most other modelers, <laughs> which I'm, I'm not like most other models, but uh, you might want to leave these items off and paint them separately. Uh, it's totally up to you, whichever way that you find easier. Um, I tend to lean towards attaching these items, but if you don't have a steady hand, uh, and I'm not saying I have a steady hand, but <laughs> if you, if you uh, prefer to do them off the model, that's fine, and just attach them later. So when it comes to attaching these brackets for our uh, smoke grenade dischargers, there are no location points on the turret. So you have to kind of eyeball this up using the diagrams to see where they go. And then we'll just go ahead and attach the rest of the parts to the turret. All the hatches and the vent cover and 
and here again uh, I am gluing it up from the underside um, that way we don't have any big ugly uh, glue marks not that to me an extra thin actually causes any real issues with that um, just want to make sure that everything fits perfectly and looks good so there is a lifting pin uh, that goes on the back of the turret here we need to install that before we put on our uh, turret storage box here and when it comes to the storage box there is a line molded into the rear of the turret which we want to make sure we've got all that lined up and then we'll just go ahead and glue that into place and now we're ready to attach uh, the main armament and I'm using Tamiya thick cement for that it has a whole lot more holding power and it allows me to uh, get the gun in place and make sure that the mantlet is lined up with the turret we don't want that to be skewed in any way uh, that would not look good so we just want to make sure everything's lined up I'm also going to use the thick cement to glue our actual smoke grenade dischargers in place and we just want to make sure that we can still adjust this and yeah, that looks pretty good all right now we are going to attach our iconic square in shovel that all tigers had however there are no locator pin marks or holes uh, for this shovel so you just kind of have to eyeball it and get it lined up I use reference photographs to try to get it as close to where it's supposed to be as I can another addition is these photo etch uh, grills now these are Tamiya and they're for the Tamiya uh, Tiger however I believe they're gonna fit just fine on the Academy one so after cutting them out of their fret uh, we we'll go ahead and lay them in place here now we are going to paint the uh, the vehicle with these off first and then we'll add them later but here in the <laughs> on the on the rear vent or re rear grill door I should say um, it doesn't fit because I have went ahead and glued the latches for the forward armored doors in place and those should be glued on later not thinking uh, about that so anyway what we're going to do is we'll just trim up the uh, uh, the photo etch just cut that little bitty piece out so it'll set down around it it, it it won't be an issue so when it comes to these mud shields uh, Academy has molded on these little triangular pieces on the ends and at looking at reference photos uh, they didn't have these uh, at least in all the photos that I saw of actual tanks in combat so we're just going to trim these little triangles off I mean there, there's plenty of uh, plastic up where it uh, attaches to the um, to the side of the vehicle that it's not going to be an issue with getting the angle right However, once we do cut these off, it is awful thick on the end, so I'm going to file this down at an angle and finish sanding it too to uh, give the impression of it being much thinner than it really is, and that'll help with the look of the vehicle. So I still got this one to do, and then the two for the other side. And once we get that glued into place, you can see that that uh, looks much better than having those ends on it so now we need to pay attention to our spare track and also this strip now the instruction says we can use the was it e6 and e or e5 and e6 parts to make this from or you or use uh, just a polystyrene strip which is what i'm going to use i'm just going to cut me a piece of strip and glue that into place and that'll hold our track section in uh, right on the front of the vehicle so it's supposed to be two and a half millimeters wide and then I'm just going to measure it out and mark it 
And then we're just going to cut it to length. And may need a little bit of sanding to get it fitted into place. Now there wasn't a whole lot to glue it to, so I did make those little bitty wedges you can see down in there. Uh, just so that we'll have a little bit more meat for it to, uh, to hold it in place. Now we do want to make sure that our uh, shackles, uh, our towing shackles, that they fit. Uh, and it's going to look right. If we need to make some adjustments, we probably need to do it <laughs> before we start painting. So there we go. And that will wrap up part two. Special thanks to all my subscribers. I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if it weren't for you, I wouldn't make these little videos. And if you're new to the channel and you like this kind of content and you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss uh, the next part, uh, part three of this build and future videos as well. Speaking of part three, uh, we will be painting so that ought to be a lot of fun get into some pre-shading and also the color selection for this vehicle uh, we're going to go with the initial gray probably not as dark as the regular german gray though <laughs> it's hard to see details with it being that dark so if you have any comments i'd like to hear from you as always and until next video you guys stay safe and i'll see you in the next one